Uh, our approach to it is kind of when we approach people uh, to try our gin, they are kind of standoffish. So, and we knew that going into developing this, so we wanted to create something that um, would kind of re, not reinvent gin, but get people to love it again. The big conception with gin is that it's bitter, that the only time it tastes good is drowned with a lot of tonic. So our thought, let's make a gin that people want to sip on the rocks. Let's, let's make one that people can enjoy alone, that they don't you know, close their nose and then try and just shoot it and get it out of the way. Uh, we want to make a citrusy gin, a gin for non-gin drinkers. Uh, when we first started developing this, you know, we're throwing poppy seeds and lavender and everything that we can think of at the spice store, you know, and trying to create this 24 flavored gin. And, and then I told Greg to, uh, well, let's just make it simple. Kind of sparked in our head, that's what we want. That's what we wanted for our gin. We want our gin to do that, to be dynamic, to be symphonic, to be able to um, expand on your palate and not just stay flat with pine all the time. We wanted it to have orange and citrus and then kind of explode with floral flavors and then finish off with that nice breathy pine and then you just have a nice well-rounded flavor after you've all after you've taken it all in but it should be a sip breathe you'd sip breathe in between each of your each of your um, tastes of alcohol and, then, and if, if it's a good alcohol it should change distinctly every single